All my recent overtime let me splurge on some development boards. And I started off with a, uh, an Onion Omega 2 um, to sort of fill the role of a Pi Zero, which I couldn't find. And then found this router board from Highlink that uses the same CPU. Uh, both these were in a previous video I did with my first successful boot of Ninefront on this platform. Um, now I need to get the drivers done for networking, I squared C, and a few other interfaces. I also got another Wi-Fi router with an uh, Theros 9531 CPU. It's also a MIPS 24KEC based CPU, but uh, this one is wired to be big Indian instead of a uh, little Indian like the other. Uh, unfortunately, the manufacturer of this board used some weird plug rather than pins for the debug UART, so I haven't gotten into it yet. Uh, this one comes with a board onboard Wi-Fi, um, and it also has a mini PCIe slot and a slot for a SIM card. And cellular data seems to be a popular option for a lot of these router boards out of China. Um, I'll have to see if I can find a cellular data card that'll work with my phone company. Um, maybe someday try this out, um, especially since it's so easy to do, you know, within plan nine to mount different networking interfaces. There, uh, might be some fun to be had with this one. And in my house, I have a couple of these, uh, TP-Link Archer Wi-Fi routers. And, uh, when looking up, you know, some alternative to flash them with, I found out that they use a, uh, these dual core MIPS CPUs. So I found another Highlink board that also uses it. It's uh, another MediaTek chip. It's the MT7621. Um, it's a MIPS 1004 KEC. So like the others, it lacks a floating point unit, but adds a digital signal processor. Uh, this chip runs 800 megahertz, but it's dual core with dual threads. So, um, now this board doesn't come with Wi-Fi, but it does have the mini PCIe slot. So that gives me a few possibilities. It also has a couple of USB ports on it. Um, although I'm not really sure what to, what I could plug into it. Um, I have seen some other boards running this MT7621, uh, that come with SATA ports. So, you know, this might, uh, be, a uh, an option for a nice low power uh, kind of combo router file server. Um, something I thought it was maybe like, um, you know, having a separate grid just to contain and supply kernels and configuration files to like IOT like devices. And the, uh, the WAN side of the router could provide the 9P interface to the devices like in that contained little grid. And the last of my MIPS collection is this one from a company in China called Ingenic. Uh, it's the X2000. And it's a 32-bit MIPS chip uh, that has a floating point unit. So this is like a regular generic general purpose CPU. Um, some varieties of these Ingenic chips have been used in like some like of those cheap handheld game emulators. Um, and they make a variety of other chips marketed for tablets and sort of like IP cameras and other IoT devices. Um, this one's dual core and clocked at uh, one gigahertz. Um, this one came to my attention because uh, the single core variant, the X1000 was recently used to make a board that could fit inside um, those old Nokia phones. So that's kind of a neat, a neat way to package up a little processor like this. So like most of these little things, they uh, come with some sort of stripped down Linux already installed on the flash. So I can boot it and pull up some information off of it. Uh, just getting this far uh, was quite the adventure with this thing. Cause uh, you know, I ordered it off uh, AliExpress and it came in a box with a QR code on it. I you know, scanned that and it just sent me to uh, like an FTP server with everything in Chinese. So it was uh, quite a bit just to figure out, you know, where to plug in even the, uh, the little UART uh, to USB dongle and get it all fired up, but it works. So runs Linux, does Linux stuff.
Okay, you can see it's a dual core jobber here. Syngenic X-Burst chip. Runs the uh, MIPS32 ISA. So, yep. And on to the ARM boards. So I heard there was some interest in getting 9Front running on the Pine phone. So I got a Pine board using the All Winner A64, which is the uh, what runs in the original Pine phone. Uh, All Winner is another Chinese company, and this is a pretty standard Cortex A53 quad core job. Uh, this chip's also used in the Pine Book laptop and the Pine Tab tablet. Um, these run like a Pi in that you can put you know Linux image on SD card and boot it. And this is what that uh, this little ARM board looks like when it's booting. Went and grabbed some uh, flavor of Linux. Um, I wanted to do a graphics running on this demo, but Linux was being Linux. The image with the uh, desktop wouldn't boot, and installing and configuring it manually is not very fun. So just command line this one. And there it is. Sorry if the text is a little hard to read. It took a bit to get my uh, video capture thing to play nice with it. But there's all four cores sitting there. But yeah, not much to see so far. I can kind of nice having Linux on here at least for developing later because I can sort of fire it up and you know go through you know scroll through kernel messages and see if there's any you know useful information on you know registers to poke or settings for various things. I also got the Pine board with the Rock Chip 3399, and this is what's on the newer Pine Phone Pro. Uh, Rock Chip's another Chinese outfit that is uh, coming out with some interesting designs. Um, in this case, this is one of those big little ones. Uh, so it has a typical quad core Cortex A53s, and also has two faster clocked A72 cores. So uh, figuring out how to schedule the different cores is going to be some interesting work. Uh, this board is also interesting that it has a PCIe slot, um, but I'll need to build some kind of case to hold it, because um, otherwise the card will wobble around. And you can see here that the uh, the bracket hangs down below the board, so either I've got to pull the brackets off and then there's no way to hold the top of the card, or you know leave the brackets on and then I have to have the card elevated. So. That'll be, luckily I got a friend with a 3D printer, so hopefully we can work something out. Um, I'm not going to run a demo on this one because these 3399s are known to run hot and I don't have the heat stink uh, installed yet. Um, long term, I'm not sure how I'm going to fit this in my grid. Um, 4X PCIe kind of covers everything that isn't a graphics card, so and if anyone has any ideas, go ahead and leave a comment. Maybe I'll try it out. And all the Dells I have are great for, you know, doing development on, but my goal is to eventually develop a better kind of everyday grid. Um, for a potential future file server, I got this board from Odroid. It has a SATA port and a NVMe slot, uh, so that gives it a couple options for how to set up storage on it. Uh, it also runs a rock chip CPU, this is the 3568. Uh, it's a bit more of a mundane CPU. It's just a kind of a quad core processor. Um, it does come with a rather hefty heat sink on the bottom. And supposedly it comes with a neural processing unit. And if I read the documentation correctly, it's accessed through the USB. So that's kind of interesting. And I can give a quick little demo here of that Odroid. So. Um, 
They have a slightly different sort of way to boot. It had, does have U-boot and then runs this other thing called Petty Boot, if I understand correctly. Um, but this one actually, will right now it's booting off a USB drive. So it does have a bit of storage there. This one comes with four gigs of RAM. Yep, running Linux there. And do that I got it zoomed in again so it's kind of hard to see but uh, let's see here yep there's all four cores so and this one let's see if it should work this is one of my problems trying to get the other pine board whatever armbian was doing it wasn't configuring itself correctly and half the time the networking didn't work so i couldn't even pull down you know uh, the packages to get a, a desktop running but uh yeah definitely gonna hand it to the odroid guys just put this on uh downloaded their distro put it on a thumb drive boots right up everything configures um You can see there's the NV, NVMe listed there, um, various other parts. So, and yeah, it has the whole little pin set. So you can see there's a, a I2C bus is listed and all that sort of stuff. So it does have sort of a little row of pins, just like a Raspberry Pi does. Uh, it also came with, um, well, I had to buy it separately, a little sort of mounting bracket for hard drives. And it came with that adapter plug. And um, so... And yeah, with that big fat heat sink on the bottom, it should be fine. And last and almost least, uh, I got a RISC-V chip that uh, is packaged up in a Pi Zero form factor. This is uh, All Winners D1, and it's a 64-bit RISC-V single core at 1 gigahertz. It comes with what I've heard is a very rudimentary 2D graphics processor, and it does have a Wi-Fi chip tacked onto the board. Um, this one has a half a gig of RAM. Uh, Richard Miller, the guy who first ported Plan 9 to the Raspberry Pi, uh, also did a RISC-V compiler for Plan 9. So eventually I'll try to get all that running on 9Front and uh, then see if I can get this uh, to actually run 9Front. Um, uh, time will tell how big of a splash Risk Five makes. Um, not hold my breath. I've already seen one mass extinction in the Risk space, so it wasn't all that long ago that like you know every game console was running some variety of the PowerPC chip. Other than that, I got a few other bits and pieces that I've got, and a few more on the way. I've got a small e-ink display and a little OLED display, um, so. Got to get the drivers going so I can play with those. And uh, I should be getting some more free time soon here, probably within a month, month and a half. And hopefully we'll get a lot of this stuff off the ground. And in the meantime, have fun.